Okay, so we're recording. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn this over to Robert. All righty, thank you very much. Let's see if I can get this full screen so I can see everything best as possible. And we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about today uh, is probably one of the most important aspects of seed collection, and that's gonna be tree identification. Um, so we're gonna start with the white pine. Uh, this is the only pine tree that we're uh, looking to grow here. And so some characteristics, uh, the trunks are tall uh, and they're straight, reaching three meters wide. Um, they can grow up to 40 meters tall, which is pretty tall. Um, and the most diagnostic character of these white pines are their needles. Now, um, many different pines in our area have needles in groups. Um, the white pine has needles in groups of five. Uh, so when you walk up to a pine tree and you wanna know, is this a white pine? Uh, you can just go ahead and pick off the needles uh, in each group and count. Uh, we'll actually do that in a little while uh, when we do sort of the hands-on part of, of the training and just to practice. Um, identifying the trees. Um, the cones that you'll be collecting, they're going to be three to eight inches long. Um, and I do have examples of those as well, uh, just so you can get a feel for what they look like. And so moving on to the tupelo, um, we actually haven't grown any of these trees here yet. Uh, this is a tree we're looking into growing um, this year, if we can get seeds for it. Um, and so it's actually also known as the black gum tree. Um, the summer foliage is glossy and dark green. Um, it has very vibrant fall foliage with a rough gray bark. And the fruits are somewhat ovular, blackish blue. Um, they kind of remind me of grapes, a little smaller than grapes, but uh, that's what I would say they look like. Um, they could be 30 to 50 feet tall. Um, and the fruits are ready from September to November. So in a couple of weeks here, uh, we should be seeing the tupelo seeds and the tupelo fruits um, becoming uh, ready for harvest. So moving on to the uh, oaks that we have um, for this project, we have the white oak, uh, the swamp white oak, um, and the bur oak as well. And so identifying oaks is a little tricky. In our area, there are many, many different species of oaks. Um, but one overall characteristic that all of our oaks here that we're looking to grow have is that their leaves are round, or the lobes on the leaves are round. So you can see here on the white oak, the bur oak, and the swamp oak, um, none of them come to a point. Um, if you walk up to a tree and there's acorns on the ground and you look up into the tree, and you see a leaf that has uh, the lobes that come to points, or the leaves have uh, are rounded, but they have like a little like thorn looking point. Uh, that is not a white oak. Um, so yeah, that's one pretty diagnostic characteristic is that all of the leaves uh, possess rounded lobes with so no points. Um, the swamp white oaks and bur oaks have leaves with dark green tops um, and fuzzy bottoms. And these two trees, are kind of going to be um, hard to distinguish between each other um, just because of the leaves looking so similar. Um, so the white oaks have five to nine lobes, the bur oaks have four to seven lobes, and the swamp white oaks have 10 to 14 lobes. Um, and we do have examples of a mature swamp white oak leaf um, and some immature trees as well that we'll look at um, a, little, a little later on. Um, after I finish talking here. And so moving on to the uh, acorn identification uh, for each tree. Again, the swamp white oaks and the bur oaks are very similar. Um, they both have kind of that fuzzy cap and then uh, the, the base of the acorn really is just um, kind of the same for both. And so the diagnostic characteristic to distinguish between those two um, is the stalk present on the swamp white oak. And the, there's no stalk present on the bur oak. You can kind of see here where the arrow's pointing. Uh, that's gonna be pretty long. The bur oak um, has a very little one, if any at all. Um, and that sometimes is attached to the acorn um, on the ground as well. I, I saw some pictures 
of some that were scattered on the ground and that was still there. So that's still a pretty good distinguishing feature between the swamp white oak and the bur oak, if you can't really tell from the leaves as well. Um, the, the white oak acorns are, are very, that's like a, a generic acorn. That's what I think of as like a representative acorn. Um, so pretty much uh, base your identification for white oaks off the leaves. And so one thing to look out for, or one species of tree to look out for that's very similar um, to the white oaks that we have is the English oak. Now the English oak is a non-native tree. It obviously came from Europe. And even though it's not native, it doesn't, it's not invasive, it doesn't harm the ecosystem. Um, although some people can make the argument that it does take space away from the native trees, um, it still provides benefits to insects and animals. Um, so uh, that's why we still find it around in our area. Uh, and so some diagnostic features for those that separate that from the white oak um, is the ear-like flap uh, that's at the base of the leaves. And I have an English oak over there that we'll take a look at um, in a little while and you'll be able to tell, um, or you'll be able to see that ear like flat, but that's gonna be um, right down at the base of the leaf. Um, it's kind of hard to tell for this picture, but I will definitely be able to see it on the real uh, plant. And the leaves are also small um, and significantly smaller at that. So um, I'd say the, the English oak leaves are usually in the two to three inch range with the white oak leaves, uh, they can get to, I'd say four or five inches. So they're significantly smaller uh, than the white oaks. Robert, yeah. I'll just jump in to say, it's, and, and also those white oaks, they taper really nicely to the stem. Um, and, and you might wanna take a picture, a look at that center photo because all we have is young examples and the leaves are kind of weird when they're young. And so moving on to actual seed collection. And for seed collection, timing is definitely everything. Um, collecting seeds too early uh, will decrease the quality of the seeds. Um, seeds that are collected too early are, are immature and um, have low germination rates. And so we'll reduce the yield of trees that we have um, here. And so collecting seeds too late um, also decreases the quality. Um, this is because seed shed has already occurred. That means that uh, the pine cones have already expelled the seeds uh, that they have and the acorns have already dropped to the ground. Um, and when this happens, uh, they can be predated on by insects or other animals. As most of you probably know, deer love acorns um, and so do insects. Um, so we have the acorn weevil and we have a pine cone weevil. And actually, when I was grabbing pine cones today uh, to show you guys, I put them on the table and I saw this little bug crawling. So I picked it out. And it was actually a pine cone weevil. So I have that in the jar back there to look at. Um, not that it's much to look at. It's only about this big. But <laughs> anyways, um, and if you collect seeds too late as well, uh, they could start to deteriorate, uh, mold and rot. So the end of the harvest season, probably around November and December, everyone knows it gets cold, it gets wet. And these are perfect conditions for uh, mold and rot. So uh, collecting seeds at the optimal time um, is best. And so some more seed collection tips. Um, the mature acorns are ready for harvest. Uh, when the cap of the acorn has changed from a greenish color to more of a brown or black color. And you can see it on the top right photo there. Uh, the cap of the acorn is brown and the uh, the base of the acorn is also turning um, more brown as well. On this previous picture, you can see in this person's hands, um, those that's pretty green. Um, both the cap and the base of the acorn is green. So we want to definitely wait until the cap of the pine cone and the base or acorn and the base of the acorn are starting to turn brownish. Um, if you find pine cones that are on the ground, uh, there's going to be uh, well, you could find one with a scap or a cap scar present. Um, this means that the acorn is mature. Um, if you find acorns that are on the ground with the cap still present, or you find them in the tree, um, you can test if the acorn is ready for 
um, ready for harvest by kind of tugging on the top of the acorn. Um, if it pops off pretty easy, then go ahead and collect. Um, and so the harvest will begin in August. So we're just starting to get to the, uh, that point where the acorns are starting to mature. It can last until December. And it is gonna be different from tree to tree. Um, but the, between August and December is your best time to collect uh, acorns. And moving on to the pine cones, uh, these are mature when the pine cone is puffed. Um, you'll see in the bottom right picture there, uh, that is a picture of a puffed pine cone. Um, an immature pine cone would be the second picture right here. You can, it's kind of blocked off, but uh, the whole pine cone's closed up and it's still pretty green. Um, so that's one telltale sign that the pine cone is not quite ready to harvest. Um, when the seed is full and white, but not milky inside. So you can test this in the field, um, you know, uh, remove the pine cone seed, which is gonna be uh, behind the each scale. You can peel the scale away and there's gonna be two um, seeds at the base of each scale, if, if they're still present. Um, and you can remove the seed and uh, cut it with scissors or a knife. It's probably gonna be tricky because they're very tiny. Uh, but if it's, if it's milky, it's probably not ready. Uh, but if it's white and full and no, uh, water uh, drips out, then it's probably uh, ready for harvest. Uh, another sign that the pine cone is ready is when it has fallen to the ground. Uh, although this isn't ideal, um, this usually means that the seeds have dispersed, so the pine cone has released its seeds, uh, or an animal has um, already ate most of those seeds, in that case, uh, the pine cone weevil that we have. Um, and pine cone harvest, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, September until December. So um, not quite yet. Uh, we will be harvesting pine cones, but in a couple of weeks, again, just like the two below, um, we can begin to harvest these pine cones. And so some more seed collection tips. Um, harvesting mature fruits from trees um, ensures a high quality and a high germination rate. Um, if the fruit is hard to pull off the tree, uh, you can use uh, cutting tools such as scissors. Uh, using rakes to gather many fruits at once is also very efficient. Uh, if you have a pretty large tree with a large area, um, it's most efficient to rake all the leaves or rake all the seeds, acorns, pine cones, whatever that may be, uh, into a pile and collect those um, like that. And so when we're collecting the pine cones, we want to make sure not to fill um, bags more than halfway. And so we'll, uh, we want to use paper bags or a cloth bag, something that can breathe because um, these pine cones need to dry out um, or else they're going to be susceptible to mold and rot. Um, and one way to assess uh, the quality of or the quantity of seeds in a pine cone is by actually slicing it in half. So if you're able to cut the pine cone in half um, and count the seeds on each side, if you count more than 10 seeds per side, uh, that means uh, you can go ahead and start collecting. Um, you obviously wouldn't use that pine cone because you know, it's cut in half, the seeds are cut in half, but most other pine cones in that area should also have more than 10 seeds. Um, so for transporting and shipping the seeds, um, acorns are very susceptible to drying out. Um, and if they do dry out, the seed quality will diminish. And so we suggest that you get them to the field station as soon as possible um, for planting. And if you can't get them here soon, um, go ahead and place them in a plastic bag uh, with a wet paper towel or moist potting soil or peat moss uh, and keep that in a cool, dark place until you're able to get them to the field station. Um, Tupelo seeds are much like acorns. Um, so we, we'd want to ship them or transport them the same way. Um, and again, just try not to overfill the bags with pine cones. Halfway is probably good enough um, just to make sure that they're able to dry out. And I don't know if I said this already, but pine cones are a lot less susceptible to drying out. They're actually supposed to dry out. Um, so if you don't get them here for, let's say, a month or a month and a half, then there's no problem with that. Um, And so when you're dropping off the seeds, um, please make sure to provide um, a date of collection. 
uh, where the seeds are collected from, whether that's a new site that we don't have on our seed collection uh, list, which we'll get to in a minute, um, or it is, so we know, okay, this seed's already collected here, we don't need to go visit this place. Um, and a branch of leaves for identification. Um, I am very confident that you guys will identify correctly, uh, but uh, there has been mistakes. So we just like to make sure that uh, we'll be planting the right seeds and not wasting our resources here. And so where can these trees be found? Um, these are general locations. So you can usually find white oaks and white pines um, in large parks, cemeteries, and wild places. Um, swamp and bur oaks are often planted along streets and cities. Uh, and tupelo trees are usually only found in wild places. Uh, although we do have one uh, down by the enclosure we'll see in just a little while. And so, yeah, we can talk about our seed collection sites here, but uh, that's pretty much all I have for the training before we start. Um, before we start the, the hands-on portion. I'm gonna just jump in. Yeah, and yeah, of course. Thank you, Robert. Um, one thing I want to reiterate or, or just say, so as Robert said, often it's best to collect uh, the seeds from the trees themselves um, if you can. But that's not to say if they're on the ground, that's that's awful. Um, so certainly, especially like for pine cones. We say it's best off the tree because, as Robert said, if they're on the ground, then most of the seeds have been released or found by an animal. Um, however, that is how most of our pine cones end up to us, is off the ground, because a lot of times you'll have like a 100 foot white pine tree and you have no way to collect off the tree itself. Um, and usually there will be anywhere from like two to 50 seeds still in that pine cone, even though it's on the ground. So I say that just to say, we're not gonna reject pine cones that you found on the ground. Like those are still valid. Um, it's just best case scenario is to get them off the tree because then, you know, there's hundreds of seeds potentially that we can use. Um, so it's a little more efficient. Um, Robert spent a lot of time like pulling <laughs> scales apart yeah. and like banging out <laughs> seeds from inside the pine cone. Uh, so anyway. That's just the caveat there. Um, also, one thing I think we didn't note for the acorn, just take a look and see if there's any little bore holes in the acorn when you collect them because the acorn weevil makes that bore hole into the acorn. And that means that acorn is probably not viable. So if you find one that has a hole in it, maybe skip over collecting that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, <laughs> so that's, our, that's our meeting, okay. Before we kind of move over to the hands-on um, bit, did anyone have any questions about what we just talked about? Do you have handouts? Like, do you have a paper copy of all that information? Or are they on the web somewhere? Yeah, we'll definitely make this PowerPoint available. Um, and I think we have some resources with that are written out that we can forward as well. So definitely, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, pra practice with all this is key. And, and you know what? Worst case scenario, collect, bring it to us. And, and if it happens to be, you know, one of the non-native species, then that's okay. Like no harm done. Um, we, we get that a lot actually, that we end up with some English oak acorn by accident because of the similarity. And it's, that's fine. It's, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Robert, thank you so much yeah, for that. Course. That was that was great. Um, and I want to say to the Courtney who had joined us, um, we are kind of moving into a hands-on portion. So we are going to kind of sign off the Zoom unless you have any questions and feel free to ask or put that in the chat. Um, but unfortunately you can't participate in our, in our hands-on version, but um, we will send you this recording and we'll also send you, um, we'll have a list of sites in case you wanna sign up to take a look out, monitor any of our seed collection sites for us. So we'll, we'll send that by, by email. Yep, definitely. All right.
Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I think there's something in the chat. Oh, there is something in the chat. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay. Great. Thanks, Courtney. So I will stop the recording.